right, what's going on guys? Today we're back and we're gonna be working on the golf. I know you guys haven't seen this in a while. Um, it's back there. We're actually building the roll cage for it right now. We're about halfway into the process and um, let me turn you guys around. It's been a while since I've updated you guys on it and I'm sure you guys have wondered where it's been. So I'm gonna show you what we've done so far, what still needs to be done and just take you along for the ride. And then we're gonna be doing all the cuts, the welding all ourselves for the roll cage. We've already got the main hoop done up top, the, the bars that go down. We have the X in the back, and then now we're gonna work on the harness and then the door bars. And then we're also gonna work on the back half today. Well, we're also running into some electrical gremlins. Um, it's pretty standard on a GTI. And then some boost issues. So the boost issues we're experiencing, or I'm experiencing, is I'm tu it's tuned for E85, but it was doing this beforehand, so I should have fixed it beforehand. So when you go and wide open throttle, it hits um, boost cut and then it goes to limp mode. No boost at all, restricts all the boost. I changed the N75 valve, that wasn't it. Replaced all the vacuum lines, didn't help. Did the SAI delete. Uh, N249 delete, still having problems, so I'm going to go into the charge pipes and see if I have to change anything in there. So we've tied into the floor down there, went all the way up for our hoop up front, all the way down, and then we got our X in the back all the way up there and we still need the crossbar so that the uh, harnesses can loop through but now we're going to work on um, the door bars right here so I got to work on taking the seats out and then we also got to drill new holes for the seats because whoever did this offsetted the seats from the pedals so it's very weird to drive and then shout out to Motoza they're helping me with my tuning um, but yeah, we got to figure out all the vacuum line stuff before we actually dive deeper into tuning. So we got both uh, door bars on each side on the passenger and then on the driver. We got those all cut out. Now we're going to be working on the X in the rear. So what we're going to do is go from the top just a little under that weld and do an X. It goes all the way down to the floorboard right there. And then we're going to do an intersection right about there. So there's going to be an X in the rear. And then we're gonna do our straight bar across that right there for the harness. And there's a certain requirement for the harness, like 15 degrees below, so that if you crash, the harness doesn't pinch and stuff. But yeah, she's coming together really good. And I'll just keep updating you guys. And then we're going to, we're basically going from that coupler right there, that one, all the way across across that ridge of the door right there and then it's going to meet in the back Thank you. 
just got the door bar tacked in. We got one of them right there. And our second one's gonna go up here, like I said. We got that tacked in. And then we got a, a plate down here for the crossbar all welded up. We still gotta tack it to the frame. And then it goes all the way up, all the way up there, tacked it in. And now we're working on the second piece of the X and we'll tie it into here. And then it'll go back to the same section. But yeah, this thing is looking really sick. All right, we have pretty much 99% completed the car. We did the whole X in the rear. Right in there. It's kind of hard to see. Back it up. So you can kind of see it in there. We did that. We did the door bars on the side. We got those all welded up. And now all that we have left is to fix the seats. We have to move them over because they are off-centered, so it doesn't line up with the pedals, and it's kind of annoying. And then I didn't video any diagnosis or diagnosis today of what kind of boost problems we're having. But today we swapped out an intercooler. That wasn't it. We pulled the charge pipe off. I'll show you a picture on the screen of what it was. And it's very stupid how they made it. It has like an o-ring on it and a clamp and not a clamp, a clip. So I don't know how that doesn't leak, which it should. I'm sure that's 50% of what it is. And then the other 50 was the wastegate. The wastegate was not adjusted properly, so it was cracking open way too early. So I got that adjusted right. And now it still hits slip mode. It'll hit 15, almost 20 pounds of boost, cut, and then... It'll go to limp mode, 5 PSI, a little less. So what I'm going to work on now is I'm going to look at spark plugs, take the tune off, reflash the tune, and see if that changes anything. And just keep looking at all the lines. Um, like I said, I did replace all the lines, the vacuum lines with new stuff. Did the uh, smog delete, the N249, the N not the N75, but I have a video on that I'll link in the screen. But this is just the first video and then I'll finish it off on Friday. And All right, we are back day two. Um, today we're gonna be working on getting the seat brackets mounted correctly. So whoever did this or Cabrero or whatever company made this bracket, it's super off center. So it's not aligned with the pedals inside the car. So right there, you can see the pedals and it's like over to the left a lot. So it's, it's not right. So we're gonna fix that. And then I'm going to put in the last uh, bar for the harness bar, but we need to get the seat fixed first. And then once we do the seat, I'm gonna do the uh, we're gonna go out and tune and get like a, uh, what is it called? A data log, that's what we're gonna do. Sorry, my brain farted. So we're gonna get a data log and send that over to uh, Motoza Performance. Shout out to them, they make some cool tunes. So yeah, we're gonna get that. So we're gonna get the seat done, tune, harness bar, Gucci. Alright, so looking at it, we're going to move these holes to the left about an inch so that I can get more uh, feet room and just feel more dialed into the car. So we're going to go ahead, measure that, and then mark it with the new pen. Oh my god, alright. So, we were I was taking a look at the, the motor and I noticed that 
the diverter valve hose was hooked up to the smallest port on the uh, intake manifold. And I was like, what the heck, that does not seem right. And I'm the one that did this, and I must have not paid any attention to that. And this build has really helped me realize that it is important to have properly sized vacuum hose for what you're doing. So uh, the diverter valve was hooked up to the smallest port down there, right here. And now I have the uh, boost gauge running to that. But there's another port over here that was exactly the size of that hose. So what I did is I took that and I put it on um, the line coming off of the intake manifold right there. Fixed the boost problem. It's perfect now. It's just because the uh, there wasn't enough vacuum getting sucked into the diverter valve for it to open, so it wouldn't boost up and it would not um, and it would hit limp mode. So now there's no codes. It runs amazing. It goes up to 10 psi. Uh, it should be at a little more. Uh, so we're gonna look at that. Um, but I think that's just tuning related. But yeah, this thing rips so much better now that I figured that out. It was it was making me so mad. And it was just the littlest thing. I just had to take a step back and just look at the little stuff I had already done. And it was right in front of me the whole time. So now she's good. So now we're going to get a data log, send it out to uh, Motoza Performance, and see what they say about it. Um, data logs are always good because they can always increase boost and see what can be changed. And this car is on full E85, so... She should be pretty damn spicy. But yeah, the cage is done. It runs good now. So now I'm going to put the harnesses in. Or the harness for the driver's side. And uh, I got the same brand as the seat. Cabrero. Or Cabrillo. I don't even know how you say it. But it's a six point harness. Uh, it's a snap, not a buckle, so, so yeah. And then, if you guys are building a cage too, uh, just remember that, uh, your roll bar back here, or your, um, harness bar needs to be, like, 15 degrees below your back, so if you crash, it doesn't yank up on you. So that's what we did. And, um, there is... Uh, how we got our roll cage specs is from our buddy, and he told us 24 hour of lemons. That's basically like a crappy racing series, but they have the top of the line cage building. So we followed their online guide, and it was very helpful. And it shows you what to do and what not to do, and all the best stuff. So, next video, we're going to talk about the data logs and get all that sorted and take you guys for a ride but this video was just kind of an update what's going on and what i'm dealing with right now and we also got to fix this wiring mess right here that someone jankily tried to do for the throttle body so we just need little stuff here and there but she is dialed now i'm so happy that i got that out of the way that was the biggest thing i was worried about but now she is mint and good to go I'll see you guys in the next video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to stay tuned to this build series because this thing is going to be a monster. All right, so I just measured over an uh, inch and a half, marked it right there, right there, right there. Now we're going to go ahead and drill the holes and then get her installed. All right, guys, so we got the cage finished up. It's hard to record with this big camera, um, but you guys didn't miss too much. We just put the uh, two bars in right there and same procedure as I showed you um, with the notching. Um, and then just put the seat back in. So I, I actually got it right this time, so that's something I was proud of. Um, just moved them over, the bolts over a little bit or the bracket over. And now it fits perfectly. I'm gonna go eat uh, some in and out right now. And then we're gonna make a bracket for the intercooler. I'll show you guys that. And then we're gonna do some more diagnostics with uh, the boost leak. So, 
We're gonna get that sent over to the tuning company and see what they say about that. But yeah, this roll cage is sick. Comment down below what you guys wanna see for the color. And this is only part one of the build series. I know it's been delayed, but I haven't really been able to work on it. And just being able to do the roll cage doesn't really count as the build for me. The build is doing tires, wheels, suspension, building the motor and stuff like that. <clears throat> this was just a, a step in the right direction. And it was a lot to, uh, to video or try to video because this is not my house. This is my friend's house, so. Yeah, but she came out really good and I'll update you guys in a little bit.